the most advanced robots of the future could be tiny. Strength, speed, flight. Insects come with their own superpowers. And one explorer wants to turn bugs into robots. In fact, this device also happens to be one of the fastest robots on Earth. Twice as fast as Usain Bolt. Right now we're in the micro-robotics lab, so we're about to see some test stations where we test robotic insects. I think where we get our design inspiration from is a lot of the times nature. There's good reasons for that. One of the cool things about these types of robots is they could be used for exploration. You can get into little nooks and crannies that other robots could not get into. Devices like this, so you can kind of get a sense for the scale here. We call these RoboVs, but it's kind of a misnomer. The bee is supposed to invoke aspects of the social nature of bees. In reality, the devices themselves are kind of more like flies. Bees have four wings, flies have two. Flies are arguably the most agile flyers on Earth. The agility that flies achieve, that's what we were targeting. The process of building a bee, as you can imagine, is quite complicated. We use this tool, it's a laser micromachining system, to cut patterns into the materials to make a lot of the small-scale devices that we create. The laser cuts patterns very fast and with very, very good precision. So precision down to a fraction of the width of a human hair. Imagine a robot built from tiny metal hairs. There still are a lot of components. Some of it's done through manual assembly. You're taking these two-dimensional components and then assembling them into three dimensions. Once you're done building the bee, then the interesting part happens because now you have to test it. So that's right around the corner here. So come on, follow me. All of the flight control tests happen here. And we can think about this sort of as training wheels. There's so many things that could go wrong with these tests and do go wrong with these tests. So a wing could break or a wing could fly off. The actuators could crack and fail or even catch fire. Ooh, no, not quite. Not quite. Every crash is a chance to learn something new. To understand how, you know, the wing motions that led to that failure, that crash. So just as long as the thing doesn't blow up, then these failures are, are actually many successes. So let's do one more thing. I'm just adjusting. I'm gonna give it a little bit more amplitude on the wing motions. Oh, that's a beautiful flight. And it, okay, see, it's very quick. So it only lasted for a few seconds. In reality, we probably learned more along the way from the failures than, than that, that, that simple maneuver. Now we can start to explore more aggressive maneuvers. And check out more animal superpowers. There's many ways that we are enviable of the types of features that uh, seen throughout the plant animal kingdom. I think the most exciting thing about robotics now is how close we are to it exploding and really positively impacting our lives. Science fiction has been promising us a lot over the course of all of our lives. Now it's actually starting to come to fruition.